in order to determine the electric field strength at a point one centimeter to the left of the middle charge, it will be useful to mark a point that is based on that description. So one centimeter to the left of the positive charge would be located approximately right here. We also want to figure out the distance from each of the other charges to that same point. So the distance from this positive charge to the point would be two centimeters, and we know that because the total distance between positive charges is three. And then the distance from that point over here to the negative charge will be, let's see, three centimeters. And we know that because between negative and the middle is two centimeters plus one more centimeter. It gives us three. Now, we can label this charge Q1, the middle charge could be Q2, and then this charge here could be Q3. It will be useful to draw three electric fields onto the diagram, each one produced by the three charges. Recall that when you have a positive charge, the electric field vectors point away from that positive charge, and then when you have a negative charge, the electric field vectors point towards it. For example, from Q1 to this point, we can see that we have a positive charge, and therefore the electric field should be pointing away from that positive charge. So we would draw E1, which is the electric field produced by Q1, to the right because it's pointing away from that positive charge. Now Q2 is also positive, so that means E2 will point away from that positive charge, but you'll notice that away from that positive charge will actually be to the left. So we would write E2 in that direction. Finally, E3 is produced by a negative charge, so it should point towards that negative. Therefore, we would have an electric field vector pointing towards the negative, and we would label that E3. Now, we will turn to using the electric field equation for point charges. We know that that equation is equal to a constant K multiplied by the magnitude of the charge divided by the distance squared. So for example, for E1, we would plug in the constant K, which is 8.99 times 10 to the power of nine Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. We would multiply it by the value of charge on Q1. Now that was six microcoulombs. Don't forget that microcoulombs needs to be converted into coulombs. So you'd multiply that by 10 to the minus 10 to the minus six to get it into coulombs. Then divide by the distance between this charge and the point, and that distance was two centimeters. So you'll have two multiplied by 10 to the negative two, which converts it into meters, and then don't forget to square it as well. So you're going to punch that into your calculator, and when you do so, you get about 1.35 times 10 to the power of 8 newtons per coulomb. Now remember that E1 was pointing to the right, so that will end up having a positive sign on it because it's pointing to the right. We'll set up similar calculations for E2 and E3. So here are those setups and results. A couple of things that are important to point out. Recall that E2, if you go back to your diagram, it was pointing to the left, and therefore the direction is to the left, and we would have to include a negative sign on the actual electric field value, so just take note of that. Also, remember that Q3, although it was negative to microcoulombs, when we plug it into the equation, we have to take the absolute value of that charge. So you don't want to plug negative 2 into your equation, you just want to plug in positive 2. Also, E3 was pointing to the right, so we've made sure to assign it as a positive direction, just like E1. So now we're ready to add these three electric fields together to get the total electric field. So to get the total, we're going to add all three values together. Actually, you'll notice that when you add these two values together, because they're opposite signs but equal magnitudes, they actually will cancel each other out. So the total electric field is simply 2 times 10 to the 7th newtons per coulomb. Remember, it was positive, so that means that it will point to the right. So that's the final answer for part A of the question. In part B, we were asked to place a negative 2 microcoulomb charge at that exact point right there and then figure out the magnitude and direction of the force on it. So we recall that the electric force on a charge that is placed in a field is equal to the magnitude of the field times the magnitude of the charge. Now we've already figured out the total electric field magnitude. It was 2 times 10 to the power of 7 
newtons per coulomb. And then the value of Q, that would be the charge that we're actually placing at that point, and that has a magnitude of two microcoulombs. Remember, we're just using magnitude right now, so we're not going to plug in negative two. We're just going to do two microcoulombs. So that's two times 10 to the minus sixth coulombs. You can multiply this out, and when you do so, you actually should get four times 10 to the power of one newtons, which of course is just 40 newtons. Now, as for the direction, we have an electric field that's pointing to the right. But whenever you place a negative charge in an electric field, the force actually acts opposite to the field. So you actually have your electric force pointing to the left in this case, because again, a negative charge placed in a field will experience a force opposite direction to that of the field. So if the field points to the right, the force will be to the left. And so this completes the answer to part B of the question.